Interesting um, news story coming out of UC San Diego. This one caught my attention because, you know, I'm a I'm an alumni. I'm a Triton. I went to UCSD back in the 80s. And their chancellor, Pradeep Kosla, is getting a $500,000 raise. You're like, wow. I mean, because this guy works for a state run school, UC San Diego. This is a public university. Um, he's getting a half a million dollar raise that's going to bring his base salary up to $1.14 million a year. Now, apparently it was part of the story is, is that he was considering leaving and going to a, a private school to be their president or chancellor and would have been making a lot more money. But they figured out a way to pay him more to keep him here. Now, this is also, I mean, there's a lot of angles to this, but one of the angles is, is that there's a desperate need for talented people all throughout our economy. People are willing, companies and universities are paying more and more to attract talent. There's not just a shortage of, of drivers for mass transit, which we talked about earlier in the podcast, but there's a shortage of really good leaders for public universities. So um, this will make um, UCSD Chancellor Pradeep Kosla one of the highest paid public university leaders in the United States. You know, it's interesting is usually when you look at the highest paid public employees in most states. It's usually the football coach at UCLA or, or University of Alabama. You know, it's usually the football coach that makes the most money. Maybe the chancellor at UCSD might be moving up the list. I still kind of doubt it. I mean, 1.14 million a year is a lot, but these coaches make a hell of a lot more than that. So UCSD Chancellor Pradeep Koslo has been given a $500,000 pay raise by the University of California's Board of Regents to prevent him from accepting the presidency of an unnamed private out-of-state school. All of Kosla's new raise will be paid with private money, according to the chair of the Board of Regents. Private donors in the San Diego area collectively gave about $13 million to endow a chair whose interest income will cover the added expenses. So all of these so-called evil rich people have donated money to create a foundation that's going to, or an endowment that's going to spin off cash that will easily cover a $500,000 raise for the UCSD chancellor. To me, this is, this is again, kind of funny because usually everyone's angry at the rich people, but yet the amount of philanthropy that the rich do throughout San Diego County is tremendous. I mean, like, I mean, we can make a huge list of all the great things that a lot of the people that are wealthy here that have done. And look at this, instead of milk and the taxpayers, people are voluntarily coming up with a half a million dollars a year. Um, now, a, a, according to um, Rich Lieb, who's the chair of the Board of Regents, who's also a business person, he wouldn't identify who donated the $13 million, but said the money was raised quickly out of concern that UCSD would lose Kosla, who oversaw a record $3.05 billion campus fundraising campaign that ended last year. Wow, they raised $3 billion. That's incredible. Um, because, you know, there's been so much construction on that campus. So much development. There's a lot of money in there for developers. So it makes sense that, you know, they, the, the people in the development community are probably backing him just so they can get some of those contracts to build the new dormitories and the new classroom spaces and all the other structures that are going on throughout the campus and all the infrastructure that goes with it. But there's also a lot of people that are very supportive of what they're doing academically and, and from research perspective at UCSD, because a lot of that fuels a lot of the innovation and a lot of the labor force that are used with technology companies here in San Diego County, biotech, computer science, et cetera. I mean, UCSD is this Petri dish of, of talent of intelligence of innovation that not only powers that university and allows them to get a lot of federal grants and other things 
but it's also the, this matric this matriculates out into the economy. And then these UCSD graduate students are the ones that are founders for some of these large companies that end up building the economy here in San Diego. Um, the chair of the regents went on to say, there was a very, very strong commitment from the community to get this done because of what Pradeep has meant to San Diego, including helping to bring the blue line trolley to campus, building lots of housing. <laughs> See, again, all these topics kind of interweave. Housing, homelessness, mass transit, now UCSD. They're all connected. Erwin Jacobs, the co-founder of the chipmaker Qualcomm, told the Union Tribune he was one of the donors, but declined to say how much money he gave. I mean, he's, gave he's given a ton of money to UCSD, Erwin Jacobs. Um, incredible. Yeah, so the, the, the $13 million was generated quickly to help build this endowment. Um, he goes on to say, he's been watching over tremendous growth that's allowed more Californians to be admitted. He's worked with the faculty, staff, and donors on all accounts, and he's dealing well with the housing issue. UCSD has just over 28,000 students when he arrived. Today, it has roughly 43,000. Kosla said the last year enrollment could hit 50,000 in about a decade. That's just mind boggling. When I was a student there in the 80s, when I graduated, there were 13,500 undergraduates. Now it's three times the size, soon to be four times the size. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Um, the enrollment boom resulted in a housing shortage that pushed nearly 3,200 students onto waiting lists in 2021. They couldn't get housing on campus, which pushed them into the 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 regular housing market where people are renting apartments and condos and homes where there already is a housing crisis where prices already were expensive thus adding more and more to the challenge more and more to the housing problem but they're addressing it they're trying to put more housing into UCSD but get this the university is drawing up plans for a village that could house 35 to 4000 students when it is finished UCSD would be able to house close to 28,000 people, more than twice the population of Solana Beach. Holy crap. Double the size of Solana Beach. Now they're doing that by doing high rises. They're putting in some, you know, 10, 15 story buildings in there. When I was a student, I think the tallest building there was Tioga Hall on the John Muir campus. And that had to be about 12 stories, if I remember, maybe 10. They used to have the pumpkin drop off of that. Sadly, some students committed suicide jumping off it. That's a whole other angle. A lot of students used to be the top dog in their high school, and then they came to UCSD and realized they're not the top dog anymore, and they had to compete, and some of them struggled. And sadly, that resulted in suicide. Um, but I digress. Um, they're building high rise buildings at UCSD to house people, which makes sense because their geographic footprint there at La Jolla Village Drive and Torrey Pines, it's not that big. I mean, you know, they, they can't expand horizontally. They can only expand vertically. And this is what's happening throughout San Diego County. But in a lot of cases, they're not allowed to expand vertically because there are regulations by the, San the California Coastal Commission that prevent high rises near the beach within a certain number of miles from the beach. In fact, I think it's if you're west of the five. Now, UCSD is west.